Hi, this is Faraz Rahal. I am a retina specialist. I'm here at the OIS at ASRS in Chicago. And uh, I'm going to be interviewing Vikin Karagosian. He's going to tell us, who also is an ophthalmologist, by the way. He's the head of Allegro. And he's going to be telling us about their, their new retina programs. Uh, only new in the sense it's starting to get uh, out in the public, but I've known about it for some time. Obviously, he's been at it for some time. Why don't you share with us uh, first about the retina program in general, and then maybe about the specific trial data you can share with us? Sure. First of all, for us, thank you for having us here today at ASRS. We really appreciate the opportunity. Um, yeah, Allegro has been around for about eight and a half years. We have a integrin modulating uh, peptide portfolio for both front and back of the eye. We're going to focus on retina today. Basically what we showed today was a teaser of our U.S. Phase II dry MD data. This was a multi-centered U.S. Phase II study at seven centers in the U.S., actually including your site, yeah. though you weren't one of the, the principal investigators. No, I'm, 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 I'm neutral. Yes, that's but right. It is our site. Yeah, one of your sites as well. Um, and what we basically set for this study was a uh, primary endpoint of reversal of vision loss, uh, of ETDRS vision of at least a line and a half, of eight letters or more pre-specified. Now the way this, the idea that this came to be was uh, preclinical information, uh, mechanistic information showed from Glenn Jaffe's group at Duke and Barry Cooperman's group at uh, University of California, Irvine, that you could stop the inflammatory process in the complement three pathways underlying the disease with this drug and you could improve the mitochondrial bioenergetics, meaning the mitochondria stops leaking, the mitochondria works better in the outer retina. So you take sick, disorganized outer retina for the kind of patients we had in dry MD, where the patients are typically around 2060 at, at uh, study introduction. The, none of the retinas atrophied, but disorganization of the photoreceptors in outer retina means that tissue's offline, not working very well. If you fix the underlying uh, complement and turn it off, complement three pathways, reinvigorate the tissue by stabilizing the mitochondria and bringing the tissue back online, you can improve the visual acuity, which is why we have a visual acuity endpoint in the study. What the study showed, the study was completed about two months ago. We spent the last six weeks analyzing all the data. We had a press release on the top line very recently. I saw it. Yeah, and the press release basically said that we met our primary endpoint with statistical significance where two injections of resutegineb, our lead uh, drug in this space, showed that 48% of the patients, almost half the patients we treated in this multi-centered U.S. study, had a robust reversal of vision loss versus 7% of the sham. We had one outlier in the sham arm. What do you think is happening there, uh, just in a broad sense, in the macula, with the mechanisms you've talked about? How are these people getting visual improvement? We, we all understand what happens in these diseases and, and reduction of vision loss subsequent to dosing has right. always been the model. This right. is something different. What do you what do you think is happening? So yes, you're right. The, the standard right now, where well, there are no, obviously no approved treatments for dry macular degeneration. The standard right now, is to treat much later disease like geographic atrophy, treat this later disease and then try to slow down the further progression of the disease and not even focusing on vision so much as anatomy. What we've done is take those GA patients, move five years earlier in the disease process. So five years earlier in the disease process, the anatomy, key parts of the anatomy, if you're looking at an eye chart for a primary endpoint of vision, the central one millimeter of the fovea, the dead center of the fovea is the most important thing, obviously. If the dead center of the fovea is still viable, meaning you don't have outer retinal atrophy, you have disorganization, you could have uh, outer retinal disorganization of the photoreceptors, of the RPE, you can end up with this middling vision, 2050, 2060, 2070 type of vision. Patients are still bad enough that they're not reading or driving or working, but it's salvageable. When you can get underneath the disease and say these are the things that are driving sick tissue with this 2060 vision further and further towards GA, turn off those processes as long as the tissue is still viable and hasn't gotten to the death yet, you can recover it. So the difference in your model now is you're just going to treat earlier, which makes a whole lot of sense based on what you said yes. and our clinical experience as retina doctors. How did you come to choose for your product, because I know other uh, disease processes were entertained and, and thought of. How yes. did you come to choose dry AMD for this particular uh, study and this goal? So good point. Um, we've done a lot of prior work to this in retina in DME, and we still have very late stage programs in DME. Frankly, when we were, because we have a first in class um, 
class of drugs in this anti-intergrin portfolio. What's interesting is, even when we approached DME, we were under the assumption early on in the development that we were going after the angiogenic side of the disease rather than the neurologic side of the disease. As more work has been done with uh, Jaffe's lab and Barry Cooperman's lab, and we've kind of understood more clearly over the last two years what's going on, we realized the benefits that we were getting in DME are better explained as well. We'd get big improvements in visual acuity in DME, but not big drying anatomic improvements in the anatomy. Because you would stabilize the neuroretina, the vision would get better in DME, but the anatomy wouldn't dry out a whole lot. And then when, you, when we started to realize that, we went back and said, how is that possible? It's the mitochondrial bioenergetics that are driving this. We said we need to look at this in diseases where there's no fluid at all, but a lot of outer retinal disease that's driving it, a la dry, dry AMD. AMD. Understood totally. Uh, as a final question, uh, how do you view this meeting for you individually or for your company? What, what, what are the benefits you feel you get in coming to this meeting? In general, OIS has been very good to us, whether it's at ASRS or AAO or, or even recently ASCRS. Um, it brings three things to the table for us. One is the opportunity to network, to very easily get to talk to people that are hard to talk to otherwise, that have 50 things on their agenda. Number two, it's a nice opportunity for us to get the word out and bring the community up to speed of the key people involved, the three stakeholders, the physicians, the financial community, of which you're both now, <laughs> now both. as well as the corporate <laughs> world as well, can get up to speed very, very quickly. Yeah. And then last but not least, it works in the other way as well, that we end up getting the lay of the land to see what everybody, our competition's doing, what everyone cares about, what everyone's focused on in the whole community very, very efficiently, very quickly. So in general, OIS, all of the OIS meetings have been very, very good for us. I agree completely, even as a clinician, separate from being as an investor, this is really fabulous, putting all these people together. Thanks a lot, Vic, and for coming. Thank you very and, much uh, for having us. continued success.